Hello and welcome to the Cyrus community. This is Business Unusual. We are talking about destroying the giants. And as we begin to function within the context of actualizing the prophetic word in the house, the power to create wealth, it is imperative for us to be aware that the seven giants are confronted and destroyed when we have entered the land. Now, you don't talk about giants unless you are in the land and that is why today we are now going in the land and we are talking about giants and of course we will start with the giants as they are listed yes, in the in world. The land. Now yeah. what, we, what is important that we need to do? The preamble and you are going to read the scripture. Why, why we read Deuteronomy 7? Why the giants are important? It's because when you go to the power of creating wealth in Deuteronomy 8, God is speaking as if there were, as if there were no giants. Yes. Yep. He says when you have entered, you have eaten, yes. have been full, mm -hmm. have done this. Yep. When he says that, usually we need to understand the preamble where it came from. Oh yes. In chapter 7, he had mentioned this, which means in chapter 8, when he's talking about the aftermath, it means we succeeded. And that means also, when yes. you talk about going into the land, when you yes. talk about destroying, yes. we, we go into the land, yeah. we meet the giants, yes. we are supposed to destroy them. We destroy them. Now guys, when you meet <laughs> the giants in the land, you don't introduce yourself. <laughs> You're not here to create friends. Friends. Yes. You're not here to tell them, guess what? We know this is your land. You're greater, you're mightier than us. But when as we walk into this land, mm -hmm. we know you exist. Keep your distance, we keep ours. No. God has already told us, as you enter that place, yeah. destroy them. Mm -hmm. Destroy completely. Yes. And that is what you're going to do as we see these giants one by one. And of yes. course, today we will start with the Hittite. Now we want yeah. to see the Hittite in the Bible and we want to see how to destroy the Hittite. Deuteronomy 7. Yeah, verse 1 and 2, because okay. this is with the clarity of why we are saying you cannot engage the giant until you've entered. Okay. Yes. Oh, yes. Mm. When the Lord your God brings you into the land which you go to possess and has cast out many nations before you, the Hittites and Gigashites and the Amorites, the Canaanites, Perizzites and Hevites and Jebusites, all these ites, eh? yes. seven nations greater and mightier than you. Mm -hmm. And when the Lord your God delivers them over to you, you shall conquer them and utterly destroy them. You shall make no covenant with them, nor show mercy to them. Mm -hmm. Now, key issue, key issue. One, you cannot deal with the giants until you've entered the land. Mm -hmm. Having said that, yes. the giants will not ignore you in the land they will confront you oh yes so just from the onset let's yes. understand simply because god has already said mm. that as you go when the lord brings you into the land which you go to possess you already yes. know he's already yes. promised you yes you're possessing it yes that does not guarantee that the giants will just walk out no when they see you they'll not march yes and leave yes they will confront absolutely the question is after the journey you've gone, after mm. the capacity you've built, yes. when you meet the giant, how do you behave? Uh -huh. Are you going to turn back? Yes. That's what And you saying. notice something else. That in this, as we begin discussing destroying the giants, you notice that there is a sequence in which they are listed. Yes. In Deuteronomy 7. And we deliberately will go in that sequence because there's a reason oh, yes. to why they are listed in that particular order. It is not the order of their greatness. It is not the order of how powerful they are. It is the order of how effective mm. they are in terms of what you need to deal with first. In other words, when you dismantle one giant, it is easier to deal with the next. The next. But if one beats you, it's like a barrier line. Mm. Dealing with the others becomes almost impossible. So does that mean that even though we are going to talk about the, the giants yes. as they are listed, yes. Even though we are talking of, about the third giant, yes. if you've not beaten the first one, yes. yes, you can listen to the conversation, yes. but don't jump here. Exactly. Go back and stay with your one giant that you've not beaten. Exactly. So this is not the time where you are saying, because we are talking about the third giant, it means so we have definitely passed the first yes. and the second. Yes. Stay on the first until you yeah. beat it. In fact, let's look at this as a sequence. Yes. A sequence or a code or a technology. Okay? Even God, when he created was sequential yes he didn't just decide let's throw in trees before there's an earth mm. he didn't say let's bring man he can sit here and wait for us to create the earth he can even watch us he can watch no <laughs> there is a sequence and the sequence is key yes you get the sequence right you also become smart at recognizing them and remember when you talk about 
names here when you talk about the hittites yes. or we talk about the kikashite biblical names generally yeah. represent an obvious trait like yeah. a character a tradition or occupation yes. so when we're talking about yeah. a giant yeah. and defining it yes. we are telling you the character of this or yes. how it operates and that yes. is easy when you know the characteristic of yes. this giant yes. how to deal with it that was the whole idea the idea between naming them is supposed to give you a clue on how to identify and deal with a giant. Mm -hmm. Listen to that carefully. Yes. The idea between the giants being named, the, the idea behind it, is so that it's God who actually points them out. He says the Hittites. He, he lists them when he tells them. Why? He's giving you a clue to how to identify and deal with a giant ahead of you. Mm -hmm. so identify that's very cru crucial. and deal. Identify <laughs> and defeat deal. it. Not identify and know. No. Identify and deal. You can imagine yes. you're in the land. Eh? God yeah. has brought us here and we are saying, guys, we have broken through. We've yes. been talking about the season to experience God's power to create yes. wealth. We've been talking about this. We've been saying, do, deal with this. Work with this so that we can enter the land. Exactly. God tells you, listen, you're in the land. Yep. You can do this. Yep. So as you meet the Hittites, you can imagine you coming into the land and starting to discuss with people about the Hittite. Yes. Yeah, we know the Hittite. We know this is this. We here. know what it means, the characteristic. We know the, the way it operates. Yeah. Listen, this is that one time. TCC, we are saying, individually, you have to fight your giant. Yes. Corporately, we have to fight the giant. Yes. And as we give our testimonies in the group, we are simply doing that to say that we have people who already stood farm mm. to face the giant exactly people who are saying yes for once i'm trusting heaven i want to see this happening in my life because yes. when god says it it must happen yes All right? and it's important to understand why we always talk of the giants understand this while the giant in scripture talks of an external reality the same scripture shows you by the internal reality that you require to have how to deal with the giant. That tells you that the giant has capacity to activate something internally. Mm -hmm. And that's where the problem lies. The problem doesn't lie so much in the giant. Mm. The problem lies in your in, uh, internal structure. If we go back to when they were unable to enter, yeah. the scenario had nothing to do with the giants in the land. They said, this is the land of the Anakim, mm -hmm. the giants. Where's the news there? Okay. God already told you there are giants in the land. So externally they could see yeah. and they could name yes. and describe everything. Yes. The problem came when they said, we were as grasshoppers in our own eyes. Mm. They are gone internal. That's where the problem existed. Yeah. It was an internal issue, not the size of the giant. So that helps us to interpret that when the Hittite comes, he's activating an internal weakness. In us. In us. Mm -hmm. And that, if you deal with that, you've destroyed that giant. So when you're looking at the giants, when you say that we're talking about the giants, yes. as we listen, yes. what we hear opens our internal eyes, exactly. our inner eyes, to see internally yes. what needs to be dealt with. Exactly. So when you're dealing with the giants, you cannot say that I'm walking out, I'm yeah. going to work mm -mm. so that I can go and deal with the giant no. there. No, you deal with the giant here so that, so you, that can you can go yes. and do. Yes. So internally is where the war is. Yes. And the problem is, you know when you have an external giant, yes. you look, you say, wait, I slapped the giant. Yes. I kicked the giant mm -hmm. externally. Yes. Problem is internally it is you who have to kick and say, listen, I can tell they are kicked. Absolutely. I can tell they are. Because many people get wary when it comes to internal war. Yes. When you say that as a Christian, as a believer, as a citizen of the kingdom, you have to hold on and fight. Yes. But do you realize the fight is internal? Absolutely. Many people give up. Yes. And that is the biggest problem. Mm. See, even Jesus himself says something to us. He says, the prince of this world found nothing in me. Mm. You need to understand the word prince means the ruler. The one who is in control of the world system. The one who is controlling everything. Even Jesus himself says he found nothing in, in, in. me. Yeah. That tells you the key to every activity. So Even when you're talking about the giants here, yes. we're talking about, like you said earlier, the yeah. giant will activate something inside of exactly. you. Exactly. Now, why are we talking about activation in the inside? Mm. Because already, you know, a few broadcasts ago, yes. we talked about the Holy Spirit. Yes. Why are we talking about the Holy Spirit in the land? Mm -hmm. You cannot navigate. 
navigate without the Holy Spirit. Yes. When something is highlighted, when you're listening to this conversation tonight, yes. the Holy Spirit highlights what yes. needs to be changed. Exactly. Now, sometimes when you see the, the spotlight on yes. you, yes. you're not aware that you're being told, change that, exactly. change that. The Holy Spirit does not force. Yes. He will highlight something and yes. you'll be like, wow, it might sound like it's very insignificant. Yes. But that thing you're looking at is mm. what he's telling you. Move this yes. because it will help you deal with the next level of the giant. That's a powerful concept. The Holy Spirit highlights mm. what the giant wants to activate. Yes. And you need to deal yes. with it. So when it's highlighted, it's pre-warning. Yes. The giant might want to use this. Mm. Deal with it. When the giant comes to activate, he finds nothing. Yes. And that's where the power lies. So we are saying by the end of this, yes. STCC will be saying the prince of this world has found nothing. nothing. Because at that yes. point, we'll be operating where we are saying the word was spoken. Yes. The word has become flesh and yes. it is dwelling among Absolutely. us. Our testimonies will become the norm. Yes. When you talk about increase, you say there's a test of increase. Test of increase. increase will become a norm yes. in the house. Yes. And we'll come to a place where we can say we have seen the word become uh, flesh and now it is dwelling yes. among us. We are experiencing the power of God to create wealth. There That's where go. we are going. Yes. Talking about the Hittites. Yes. Yeah. Now, the word Hittite actually means terror. Now, the reason the issue is it means terror is because terror is the culmination of every kind of fear. Mm. Yeah. The ultimate, the extreme degree where fear goes. It can be from the simplest fear to the highest fear. And this includes alarm, dread, fright, panic, confusion, discouragement, mm. all those mm. things a part and parcel of the makeup of this strange creature and this strange spirit called the Hittite. I love the word discouragement. Yes. Because most of the time when you see we talk of discouragement, we do not see it as fear. Yes. Discouragement that leads you to fear. Exactly. When something happens and you're like, listen, I'm yes. trying to do this thing. Yes. It's not working. Yes. It's not it's creating fear. It exactly. is Hittite working. Yes. Hittite in manifestation. Yes. Notice how it comes. Yeah. Discourage. Confusion. Yeah. I Alarm. love the words you've used. Yes. There are some things that come and we think they are normal. Exactly. Until now you start realizing what? When I meet confusion yes. or when I meet panic, yes. all these things are activating something. Exactly. It is the Hittite in manifestation. Something is triggered and you panic. Yeah. Something, you hear a piece of news, you're so discouraged. You're under attack. Mm. Mm. Now, this, the reason behind this is that fear will naturally give birth to human effort. Mm. instead of trust in God. Stop there. Naturally. Talk about that. <laughs> Every time fear shows up, you find that you need to act. You need to respond. Mm. And any act out of fear is rarely ever in line with what God said. And you've said something powerful. Yes. That fear will make you act in the natural, yes. using human effort, yes. and you will not trust God. That's the key. When you're working in your own strength, yes. there's no trust of God. Absolutely. Meaning, Hittite is here to take you yes. away from trusting yes. God. And you know why? Because most acts of fear are in the attempt to stop something you think will happen. They are rarely to bring you to any place. Mm. Mm. An act of fear is a reaction. It's a defensive action. Yeah. It is never... A clear cut action. It's not based on wisdom yeah. or insight or any such So it doesn't activity. have an outcome. No. So it's almost like when we are saying that when you see something, when you meet with this situation, yes. Yes. you are running away from the situation, uh -huh. but you're not running into anything. Exactly. That is what exactly. is called confusion. That's and what fear yeah. does. And we see the first time fear is brought up in the Bible in Genesis 3.10. Adam said, I was afraid. Mm. I was afraid because I was naked. I hid myself. Hiding yourself is not a destination. I'm running away from them. I had yes. you. I was afraid. Yes. Therefore, I hid. There you go. So, I'm running away from you, but yes. I'm not running into anything. I'm not running into anything. Fear causes yes. you to have a blood yes. destination. You're just running. You're going You're nowhere. away. Generally, when people are running away in fear, there's no destination. Mm. So, That's when you talk about fear, the yeah. first thing fear does is blur your sight. Yes. And let me say something. Again, this Hittite, the, this nation called the Hittites, they were descendants of Noah okay. through his grandson, great-grandson Heth. So if you go back, 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 you'll find uh, who was cast 
his third son, uh, his third son's son, so Ham's son, Canaan, was cast. Canaan's descendants are the Aites. Mm. So Canaan's descendants are not the Africans. <laughs> are we okay? They are these giants. They were these giants. That's why they must be destroyed. And they are the giants God said. Yes. Destroy them. Yes. You know? That's the principle here. So once you understand, that is where that name comes from. Terror. Mm. That's what it actually means. Now, you must understand, terror has a lot of manifestations. And we'll take a little time just to break down some concepts of terror and fear mm. so that you can quickly identify. Yeah. Remember, we are identifying with what? With intent to destroy. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We're not identifying to know. It is not about accumulation of knowledge exactly. here. Exactly. It is understanding. How do I deal with these giants? Because when we talk about fear, notice what we said. Yes. That this fear is coming so that you can now start um, uh, working in the flesh yes. and losing your trust in God. Exactly. It's all about getting away from your father. It's all about getting away from the kingdom principles. Now at the outset, let me say something about this particular spirit. Yeah. You cannot pray it away. You can pray for its power to be broken, but it is only proven when you act outside of it. So, let's stop there because <laughs> prayer is key yes. in this season. Yes. After this conversation, yes. as an individual, as a family, yeah. go back and pray yes. what you have heard. Yes. If today I come and discover, okay, I have this discouragement yes. because... You know, I feel so discouraged yes. because of what has happened for me yes. in the last few uh, weeks. Yeah. And I'm feeling like my life is this and this. Yes. It has been highlighted. That yeah. discouragement yes. will cause me to start working in the natural. Yes. And my trust in God will start or eroding. Sometimes all right? discouragement can even neutralize you. Neutralize. Yes. So what you're saying is, yes. my prayer now is that now that discouragement has been yes. highlighted, yes. take us through now. Yes. How do we pray? I'll give you an example. Okay. One of our forefathers, his name is called David. Mm -hmm. David knew when he was downcast. But then he said, the Bible says, and David encouraged mm. himself mm. in the Lord. Not prayed. You can pray. Yes, he prayed. And it's important. Lord, I know I have fear. I mm. acknowledge it. Yes. Break the power. power. Of fear in my life. Mm. God does his bit. Yes. You do yours. Mm. Whatever had caused you saying, to be limited, yes. you get up and you act. And I like what you're saying about encouraging yourself. Yes. Because if I sit now and tell myself, you know what? Yes, there's discouragement. I feel yes. like I'm being discouraged by what is happening around me. Yes. Then I stand up and start telling myself, listen, there is one thing God has told me. I will never leave you. I'll never forsake there you. you. I'm starting to encourage, encourage myself. Yourself. God is not a man that he should lie. He's not a son yes. of man that is to, should change his mind. He has already said it is my season to experience his power to create wealth. Yes. He is not changing his mind. I am encouraging myself. And you know what? The minute you start taking the word of God, strength comes. And you ask yourself, what did the discouragement make me not do? Mm -hmm. That is what I'll start to do. Get up and do it. Yes. That is how you beat this. That's spirit. how you beat this. I'm loving this. That's how you beat it. Yeah. Many of us pray that prayer, but never get up. Mm -hmm. As long as you get, don't get up, the enemy knows you're still bound by fear. So there are many people who are watching now. Fear has set in, but it came yes. in the form of uh, confusion. It yes. came as in the form of discouragement. Yes. It came as uh, terror, at, as a panic. Yes. Whatever happened to you, yes. you start identifying and you're like, I can see the spotlight. I can see there's a highlight that the there Holy Spirit go. is telling me that part and that part. There you go. Now, when I pray, I am praying to get out of this. I've already yes. identified where I am. So my prayer is not, oh, Father, please now, Father, come and take me out, out of this. No, I want the strength. Show me how to get out of here. Show me how to encourage myself. Show me how to stop looking at people and having problems with people because they did and they did not do. Yes. And start telling me to exactly. start encouraging me. Yes. So it is you speaking to you. That's the thing. Yeah. Now, we continue to identify this spirit. Yeah. Terror also refers to an extreme manifestation of fear, but it, it is always connected to mystery or the unknown. In other words, you fear something unknown. There's no proof of what you fear. But it's so strong, it's almost tangible. So you always, it's something that you can't physically see. Your mind is even not sure what it is, but your emotions almost convince you something is going wrong. Mm. Your mind cannot see. Yeah. But your emotions are, are convinced. They react like something is going wrong. That's how powerful this spirit is.
I mean, I think you have to go back to that point. <laughs> your mind can see this thing, yes. but your emotions can touch it. Exactly. Think about the most natural kind of terror, the night terror. When you are asleep or in a room and you hear a sound you cannot identify. Mm. You cannot see it. Yeah. But your emotions react in such a way like something is already harming mm. you. And you know what I'm hearing? That when the giant, this particular giant yes. eats, even though this is a whole spiritual yes. activity, it actually activates the five senses. Exactly. It is about what you can see, yes, what, what you are feel, feeling, yes. what you are touching, what yes. you are tasting. It is something that you can say, listen, like you're saying, yes. emotionally, I am scared. Yes. I'm feeling the pain. I'm feeling the fear. I'm feeling that. But your mind is trying to grasp. Okay, fine. Yes. Where is the problem? Can yes. I touch this fear? Yeah, actually, the, it's almost like this spirit hijacks your five senses for the negative. Hmm. The same five senses you have, they are yours. Yes. They can be used for good. Yes. But in this moment, they are all used for the negative. Mm. To disempower you, to terrify you, to confuse you, to bring everything we mentioned. Mm. That's the power that is released in this thing. And remember, all this is happening internally. Mm -hmm. Nothing external has proven what you're going through. Yeah. So when you talk about emotionally yes. you're feeling yes. that this is real, yes. that emotional activity yes. gives you a new sight, yes. gives you a new hearing. Yes. Meaning, when now you hear something out there, the way you interpret it, exactly. because emotionally you're already arrested. There you go. So when you talk about releasing yourself from fear, when you talk about prayer now, do you see where prayer is coming there now? There you go. Because it's you're fearing something. It's supposed to break that power because that, it's not tangible. Yeah. It's not tangible. Mm. So what would happen in a situation like that based on what we said earlier? Yeah. Assume, and, and all of us have journeyed this, I'll give you some of the examples that we use. You, and listen, you can be attacked. The enemy attacks. Doesn't mean his attack should succeed. Mm. Yeah. Okay? He will always We're not try. pretending he won't try. Because he, you don't know, as you go through your day, how many levels of input you get that support that problem. Mm. Mm. You don't know how much news you read that supports it. You don't know how much information you get that supports all those negative positions. Yeah. Then when you hear something, you hear a sound and a crash, immediately everything goes on. What should be your first response? Your first response, unfortunately, is always going to be panic. Mm -hmm. When your first response should not be panic. Your first response should be, what is the truth? Yes. The truth is, God said he'll never leave me. Forsake. He'll never forsake me. Yes. One. Two, God is my protection. Yes. God is in charge of my life. I have a destiny. Mm. I have things I am here to accomplish. I am, those things begin to empower you and it tells you whatever it may be, mm. it has no power to change what I've just declared. Mm. So that is when you start now speaking that which God has spoken concerning exactly. you. Exactly. Because that's the only way to it. You can't encourage yourself with your own words. No. You have to take the word of no. God and know that, listen, God has told me I have a destiny and his yes. plans for me, they are for good. They are to give me, they are to make, do me good. Exactly. At the end of all this, to exactly. do me good. Yes. They are not to harm me. Because, I'm yeah. encouraging myself yes. in the word. Because if you don't, yeah. you will act irrationally. Mm. So a sound may come out from one place based on historical data the enemy has been giving you. Or you've heard that robbers have been breaking into the neighborhood. Or you've heard that people are being killed in their houses. Or the devil is feeding you. Mm. Who said if those things are happening, they have anything to do with you? Let me ask you, <laughs> when you talk of this kind of fear, this kind of irrational activity yes. or thinking. Yeah. Now, let's go back to the issue where we know, like we started by saying the five senses. God yes. gave us the five senses. Yeah. They are not our enemy. Yeah. They are supposed to be used for good, yes. isn't it? So now let's talk about something that we all know about the left brain and the right brain. Right okay. brain. And let me show you how this attack works. Okay. Our, what we call our logical side is supposed to be called the left brain. That's mm. the way scientists have broken it down. It's a way of simply explaining what is your natural creation. Mm -hmm. And listen, if a scientist discovers something, he didn't create it. He just discovered how it works. And sometimes he's limited in his scope, but that limitation is still good enough to give us insight. Mm -hmm. They're not enemies of God. <laughs> they discover what God created. Okay? Mm. So we are told that the left brain has more to do with logic, sequence, order. It also has to do with settlement, which means once something is clear and we've proven it, the logical brain settles that that is a permanent position. Mm. Okay? And that becomes the basis of reasoning. Yeah. 
That's the basis of defending something or arguing or whatever. So that is the truth. In fact, it's interesting in the New Testament, the two words that mm -hmm. are used mm. for the word, one is logos, where we get the word logical, and one is rema, where you get the word spirit. So it's again the same way your brain works. Yes. So when you read scripture, there's a logical progression, but when you get revelation, there's a spiritual progression. So the right brain is the spiritual progression. Mm. That's where creativity comes from. Mm. In other words, the logical brain needs data. Okay, that's the left. Yeah, the okay. left brain. The right brain creates data. Mm. <laughs> it can create, it can cause new concepts. When those concepts have become clear, the left brain puts them into order to produce mm. something. Yeah. So what you need the creative brain for is like, that's why we say brainstorming. When you say brainstorming, you're dealing with your right brain. Yeah. When you say imagining, you're dealing with your right brain. When you're saying vision, you're dealing with your right brain. Mm. But that vision, to become reality, you need your left brain. Mm. So yeah. God, listen, the world tells us some people are right brain, some people are right brain. God has no such intention. God gave you both. <laughs> you're supposed he didn't to, give you can to you work with one. You have given you the left and yes. the right, but you, you work with one. Yes, one might be, be more dominant because than the it's other. it's dominant because of influence. It's yes. not dominant because it's correct. Mm, so to be a kingdom citizen. Yes. Balance. Completely. Yeah. The mind of Christ. And that's why you both. end up working above. That's exactly. why you're superior. Because you're using both. Because you can be creative and join the dots quickly. Mm. Daniel that's called Daniel. Quick to understand. Thank you. Quick to understand. Yet, God showed him. Do you mm. see the principle? Notice how he's creative and... Uh, At the same logic. time, that's the principle. Mm. That's how our mind is supposed to yeah. work. Yeah. So once you understand that, what the devil prefers to do is, uh, this spirit, is to attack your creative brain. Mm -hmm. Because your left brain always needs a reason. All right. Your right brain doesn't. Mm. The creative side. Yes, okay. so if you give it enough data, if you hack it and give it... That is why we have a problem that many people believe things that are not so. Mm -hmm. Let me say something here. <laughs> if you're talking about creativity yeah. here, yes. and God says, now you've entered the land. Yes. In the land, you have to be creative. Thank you. God is telling you, you need to have, for example, a business. Yes. And you see someone stuck on, okay, I don't know what business to start. Uh -huh. I do not understand what I'm supposed to be doing. Yes. I'm not getting this thing. Do you notice yeah. you're just getting a spotlight in your life that your right side yeah is, actually, actually your focus is dominant yes is dominant yeah. it's your left brain that is trying trying to put into sequence yes. something that has not been created mm. so creativity when you come and find that you're not able to come up creatively yes. and do something yes. you tell yourself okay now i know what to pray exactly i know do you realize we're trying to show you how prayer after this you yes. will need to pray Connect. But what are you praying about yes there's somebody who will be sitting and saying guys as you talk I'm trying to think of what to do. And I'm trying to fight internally like, okay, yeah, God, show go. me, show me, show me. Now, how can I show you? The Bible talks about the Holy Spirit will bring to remembrance yes. all the things I've taught you. Yes. If you have not been taught anything, yes. what will he remind and you? And even so, how, how else can he show you yeah? except in your right brain? Mm. Yeah. So when a word comes, God's word mm -hmm. is both Logos and Rema. Okay? Both Safa and Daba. That's what's called a word. So it comes in logical sequence, carrying spiritual content. Powerful. So logical is to allow you to break down what is being said, but spiritual is to extract the power that is there. So what does this enemy do? Sabotage the spiritual side. Sabotage the imagination. Sabotage the ability to bring forth what God is saying, replace it with what God is not saying. Mm. Therefore, once you start seeing what God has not said and believing it, panic settles. And you begin to act, actually, illogically, but in fear it looks logical. Hmm. In fear <laughs> it looks logical. Yes. So that when you're talking and saying, this morning, what am I yeah. doing with my life? As you're doing something in your mind, in your, in your sphere, yes. in your space, it yes. looks logical. Exactly. But when you get out of understanding that the Hittite is here to get you away from what God wants you to do, then everything to you sounds logical. And that is a problem yes. when you meet somebody who is wondering, why are you telling me to stop what I'm doing and get into the kingdom ABCD? Exactly. This thing is taking me to a place where I'll have to think different. Yes. What is happening? Activating the left and the right. Exactly. The kingdom always does both. Yeah. And the, way, the reason people struggle is many people are trying to bring God to the logical side. Mm. 
Or some people are in the other extreme. For them, God is always in the spook side. Spiritual without tangible landing points. Yeah. Spook without any provable place. Mm. When it is kingdom, it has both dimensions. Mm. It is unstoppable. Yes. So you must understand that the primary place that the Hittite spirit will attack you is in your right brain. The creative side. Yes. Trying to make sure that you cannot understand what is going on. You cannot see a great future. Because the kingdom doesn't work by sight, which is logical. Mm -hmm. Sight is for carrying out. Mm. But the spirit is for downloading. Mm. And that's what they need to And forming the images. So exactly. when you talk about the word and say, now yes. as we are speaking, and you are saying that you need to be creative, what yes. images are forming in your mind? You've talked exactly. about images forming. That yes. as we speak, yes. images form. Even though you are hearing, you are listening mm. to us, as you hear, images form. Yes. If you don't have the, da the, 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 the database, yes. Yeah, enough yes. for what you are saying, yes. you do not get images. Exactly. And that is where you get stuck, like, okay, guys, I'm not understanding what you're saying. You're kind of uh, difficult. Uh, your message is a bit uh, tough. No, it's that you do not have images that are forming in your mind to give you a correct understanding of what to do next. Actually, the reality, your right brain or mm. your mind mm. is not blank. Mm -hmm. It is full of junk. Yes, and that's junk what here is not an abuse. Yes, junk is non usable material. Oh, <laughs> okay, wait. <laughs> you know, when you tell someone, you know what, your mind is full of junk. Hmm? Hello, I know I came to listen to the word, hmm? but you don't have a right to tell me that. Hmm? But you know what, if you understand what is junk, non usable material, so I'm full of a database that cannot help me move to the next level, exactly, guys. Am I being abused? In fact, I should be should be a spotlight. Yes. Spotlight for me everything that I have in exactly. my mind that cannot form a part yeah. of the next level yeah. of my life. It's too I many like broken it. pieces. Oh. Too many unfinished things. Mm. Too many uncompleted things. Mm. That's junk. That's junk. So you have a word which is not completed. Broken. You have a process that you started and you started this Broken. process that I'm going to do ABCD. Halfway you stopped. Broken piece. You have this message yes. that you had. Yes. And this message that somebody was bringing to you and telling you, listen, exactly. you are great and God yes. is telling you. Yes. Halfway. So now you're full of pieces and pieces actually, and pieces. the best picture. Wow. To even try and clean it up a bit. You know the jigsaw puzzle game? Mm -hmm. It's like you have pieces from 10, 20 different games. Mm, they will never they form a picture. They cannot interconnect. Never. Each has a piece, but it cannot connect to mm. another. That's what happens. But you're not empty. No, it's full. That's a problem. But you're full of yes. broken pieces. Yes. Pieces that can never connect. Yes. And this is what we are saying that if you talk about a, a skill, you have a skill, but you've not complete. You're not yes. putting effort on that. That's another problem. And here's the problem. Yeah. When a new word comes, mm. sometimes it touches a piece of something you have, mm. and another piece of something else you have. Now it sounds like a word for you, but when you try to now mm. process it, you're bringing the other pieces in. And you keep saying the word is not working. There you go. You know what I'm hearing? Another point of prayer. Yeah. A prayer where you're telling God, highlight for me what I need to do. Yes. How to debunk, how to remove, how to remove all this junk from my mind. I want to yes. remove these broken pieces. Yes. I want to come out of this place clean. Yes. How do I do that? Those are the prayers we're making. And, and let me just um, advertise a lot. Mm. This Friday, we begin the series, Thinking Unusual. Mm -hmm. We'll be dealing with some of those issues. Yes. Declutter. So because this Friday, stay connected. We're going to be going into what I call brain surgery, mm -hmm. mind surgery. Because the problem surgery. is that database. That's a problem. Can you imagine right now, you say, I am a son of God. I'm a kingdom citizen. Yes. I know I'm going to heaven. I know I have a prophetic one. Yes. But my mind is full of broken pieces. Yes. Please ask me, where am I going? I will tell you, listen, I know I'm in this band yes. one of people who are claiming to be sons of God, but it never seems to be downloading because I have too many broken pieces. My yes. prayer, Lord, open my eyes exactly. to see because the minute you see the broken pieces, yes. you're able to clean them out. Yes. How do you clean them out? The word. Now let me tell you, this is a deadly spirit. Everything we're telling you today globally, mm. we have such an upsurge, such an attack of the Hittite spirit that is unprecedented in generations. Mm. Unprecedented. And that is why we are hearing stories like mental health issues. Listen, one spirit, Hittite. Yeah. Because once the Hittite hits you at that level, nothing happens. That's where depression, stress, 
suicide comes from. In fact, even disease. Even disease. This enemy wants to destroy the next generation. Hittite is not your friend. Yes. Hittite is not our friend. Yeah. We cannot sit here discussing the Hittite and thinking it's just about us. Yes. I think what you, I love what you just said. It's yes. even going to, for the next generation. Yes. It wants to alienate you from God. Because if you keep the upcoming generation, you heard us talk of Gen Z, mm -hmm. one of the places where the highest mental issues are. Yeah. And also, uh, the millennials have the same problem. You must understand something. They are under attack by this spirit. And what begins to happen is that once you feel like you can't make it, the other things settle in. Yeah. The internet comes with its neighbors, cousins, friends. They're called depression. They're called suicide. They're called discouragement. They're called confusion. Mm. Mm. This is part of the family. If you went yes. to the household of this yeah. spirit, yeah. you'd find all those as part of it. Mm. Now let's just look at a list of some. Listen, the list is... So it's such a big deal that even uh, the world has names for it. It's called phobia. Mm -hmm. And they've got so many types of phobia. So many that we cannot, if we were to list phobias, if you go Google phobia, you can get like a million. <laughs> so from, from, from agrophobia, which is water, to ara is it arachnophobia, which has to do with spiders, to uh, phobia, phobia, phobia of lifts. As we are summarizing one thing. Yes. The Hittite. Hittite. God is telling you, this is a giant. Yes. Remember when you talk about a giant, you're not talking about just fear of rejection. No. No, listen, you're talking about fear. Yes. Fear of everything. The fear it in is. any area. So the Hittite knows when I get you, yes. you don't have a problem with rejection. Exactly. You don't have a problem with yes. this. I'll now give you, you another fear. I'll give you another I will fear. find a fear. This is a giant. Yes. And that's why we're saying, listen, it doesn't matter which fear it is. We exactly. summarize it and say, the giant called yes. Hittite, we are bringing it down. Yes. So everybody needs to check and say, what yeah, is yeah. my fear? Yeah, yeah. This, the, let me tell you, for me, what I find like one of the weird fears, especially mm. in a season, to experience God's power to create wealth. Yes. The fear of success. Yes. You're scared of success. Yes. Okay. What's the word for? Believe it or not. And, <laughs> and we will be looking at that fear when we look at another giant, how they work together. Yes. Yeah. The connection. Mm. So just to give you a quick highlight of some of the fears. Fear of rejection. What does that do to you? Because you don't want to be rejected, you do not make connections. You don't make relationships. Or sometimes you overdo things to be accepted. Mm. That's mm. a fear. So the same fear of rejection can work both ways it's like a coin yes it has two sides that's it there are those who are scared so yes. they don't connect they don't and there are those people. who now over connect yes just the same fear so that not to be so yeah. they, they become people take advantage of them mm. and use them mm. because they don't want to be left out wow they end up taking huge risks yeah. yeah just to be accepted yes fear of responsibility Fear of, listen, I can break each of these fears mm. with its breakdown. It's not important right now. They are all fears. Mm. Fear of failure. You never attempt anything. Mm. Mm. So you look like you've never failed. The truth is, you fear failure. Nobody has seen you fail, mm. but you fear what comes with failure. Let me, let me say something here on that one. Yeah. This is specifically for TCC we are asking. Yes. Look at the last five years. What have you attempted? Yes. Note, take a pen and paper and write, wait a minute. Outside I started of your comfort this. zone. I did this. My comfort zone, yes. I have a job or I have this one business. So we are talking to both people. Mm. What is it that you have done yes. outside of your comfort zone? Have you ever tried something? Yeah. Could that be fear, fear of failure? Yes. I don't want to try because there's that. Number two, he said something. Yes. Fear of responsibility. Yes. Now, if I start that, you're telling me I have to do fear of responsibility. Yes. Could it be fear of rejection? If I now get out of this to go into this other thing, fear of rejection, yes. notice how they work. And they're so connected. Yeah, they are. Let me show you like an example. Yeah. If you fear rejection, you will not take responsibility. Mm. It is not me. Yes. It is not me. I, I didn't do that. Yeah. Fear of failure. Very connected to fear of being wrong. Mm. I hate being wrong. I'd rather lie. Have you ever had people who hate been wrong yes that when you ask them yeah what time did you come in they don't tell you 8 a.m yeah they tell you uh to come in yeah. come in yeah, you know yeah, what is I, happening I in thinking. their mind now the if you were to open their mind their brain cells yes. they are running is yes. it that i've done wrong yeah. is it that, in one second they have yes. gone through the world because they are finding out is it that i was wrong yes. did i come late is it that i've done you're looking at so many things by the time you say yes uh uh, uh, uh Come, come in. Okay, at eight. What has you happened? See? You've gone round, round, looking at, was I wrong, was I wrong, da, 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 yes. eight. Now you're waiting for wait. What yeah. has just happened? Fear of responsibility. Yes. Fear of failure. Fear, all of them connected. Fear of being embarrassed. Mm. Mm. You really don't want to 
These things are so powerfully interconnected. Listen, fear of poverty and luck can make people corrupt. Uh, we, I think we go back to that one of uh, embarrassment. Yes. Some people will not comment in the group. Yes. Fear of embarrassment. Deal with that spirit. Deal with that. Sometimes you keep saying. Comment. I fail mean, forward. Richard, Brian, they are busy telling you. Let's what talk. have you had? Let's talk. No, I don't because I'll be embarrassed. What if I say and it is wrong? Fear Nobody of rejection. is telling you when it comes to the kingdom of God, there is a right answer. God has told me. There's no perfect this. answer. We keep saying, listen, some of the way to beat the fear of embarrassment, write it down. Yes. Say something come out but embarrassment can yes. keep you back yes. like, no I don't want this you don't, don't always look like you must have the right answer wow. that, is a, that is the hatred bringing you down yeah? and I have to mention mm. one fear mm. that has become so common we even embrace it we talk about it it has become part of our byword mm. formal fear of missing out mm. it's actually a pet word in these wow. generations wow. now you, you, don't, you, you want to be part of something so much so that you can take a risk, you can do something dangerous just to be part of what's going on. Hmm. That's a Hittite. Yes. The Hittite is everywhere. And listen, this is a very small list. We hmm. just picked out some thoughts. Fear of poverty yes. and lack. Yes. There are some people who can be corrupt. Yes. In the name of God. Yes. They will do anything crazy. In the name of God. Somebody yes. can even prophesy to you in the name of God and yes. it's a fear of poverty. Okay. Listen, I'm not going to be yeah. broke. Yeah. I'll do whatever it takes. Exactly. Why? Some people experienced brokenness yes. that when they remember where they're coming from, There'll be anything. that fear of going back yes. there, I'll do anything. Yeah, I'll compromise anything. Same spirit. Yeah. It's called the Hittites. There's somebody else who will yeah. either give Yes. Pray, yeah. fast. Yes. They are doing all those things to Out tell heaven, don't take me back. Yeah, don't there. take me back. I there. don't want to be there. Some fear. people will even go into ministry and you're not called. Mm. Because you think God will take away what you have mm. if you don't serve him. Yeah. So you end up serving in places he didn't ask you. Mm. Mm. You end up causing more damage than helping anybody because you're driven by a fear. So God is asking you to work with um, uh, trained entrepreneurs. Yes. But you're feeling like that is the world. Yeah. I want to train ushers. Yes. I want to train the choir. Yes. Because I want to do something that I feel is godly. Yeah, that is visible. Fear, because if I don't do this, I'm not serving God. God because will somebody take told away. you, if you don't do this, God will take away what you, you know have. You know the saddest Fear. Thing? Saddest thing? Wow. Too many of us. Now this one might not sit well. Too many of us entered the kingdom because of the Hittite. Fear. Fear of hell. Fear of fire. Fear of curses. Fear. That is not entering the kingdom. That so is running from this, fear. I mean, if I'm in this world, I need to be in the kingdom to avoid Thank you. curses. Yes. To avoid poverty. Yes. To avoid sickness. Too to avoid, many. So you're running away from poverty. Thank you. Thank you. In the name of, I'm getting born again. Too many preachers brought the Hittite onto their pulpit. Mm. Guys, Hittite, he's a giant. Terrible. Said, <laughs> what would happen to you if you leave this place and you're not saved? Mm. Somebody did not get saved and they died. If you do this, you'll yeah. go to hell. Listen, that is an evil way to enter the kingdom. You enter through fear. <laughs> and yet the first thing the kingdom says is fear not. Mm. How can you go down that road? You're not supposed to be pushed into the kingdom. Yes. You're supposed to come yes. willingly. willingly. You're saying, Lord, out of I love, willingly. Out of a relationship. I have looked at all this I've done in my life. Choice. I've made a choice. Yes. The first thing that is supposed scared. to leave your heart when you come before God is fear. Too many people are serving God out of fear. He mm. tight. That is why when God says, I'm giving you a land, I've given you a word. Yes. But as you start entering that word, yes. what will stop you are giants. Yep. These giants are trying to tell you, you are not going to enter this yes. land. The first one is fear. Notice yes. when we deal with fear yep. and we start facing the other giants. Exactly. You can even deal with them because I don't have fear. You must I don't fear, fear these giants. Please understand, the what is the one. intent of this uh, giant? Hitler. Please notice where the issues are. Mm. God says to enter the land to possess, you must do this. What is the intent of this giant? To make sure you do not access God's promise for you. It builds strongholds in your mind that causes you not to accept mm. God's promise. Remember that. What does this spirit do? It builds a stronghold in mm. your mind. Mm. Now that stronghold depletes you of strength, mm -hmm. leaves you deflated, wow. and takes away mm. any essential capacity you have. Two things disappear when you're hit by this spirit, courage and willpower. Mm. Mm. There we have to stop. Yes. Because we need to understand two things. 
courage and, and willpower. willpower. Explain. Yes. So that as he's explaining, yes. you ask yourself, is that me? Yes. Do I have courage, willpower? Yes. Explain what those Please words Please understand, mean. God is very clear. You're entering a land where there's a problem, right? So that means you will have to have the capacity to make choices to do something. Mm -hmm. Courage is when you strengthen yourself to move. Mm -hmm. Willpower is when you have the decision that you will not stop moving. It doesn't matter what I see. Yes. It doesn't matter what I meet. I am going down this road. Mm -hmm. The Hittite deprives you of these two oh. things. So you find somebody who is sitting, yes. listening to the conversation, and yes. you're not arising. Yeah. You, it's almost like your mind is telling you, this thing is good, yes. it is true, yes. it can happen, it, but I'm not moving. Yes. Now that you think it is you. Exactly. Remember we started by discouragement, because I'm discouraged, I don't feel like, yeah. no, 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 no. We're talking about Hittite. Yes. Taking away courage yes. and willpower. Let me tell you one of the powers, just here's a picture in your mind. We are told about the man at the gate called Beautiful, who mm -hmm. had been there how long? Mm -hmm. 38 years. That's the gate of the temple. Yes. It's a beautiful gate. He sees everybody going in into the kingdom, encountering God because that was their model, and walking away with what God has done. But he is paralyzed, sitting there getting handouts every day at the gate mm -hmm. of the kingdom. He's not entering. Not entering. So when you hear that man, you ask yourself, could that be me? Yes. Yes, I'm sitting Paralysis. here. I'm getting a testimony here. I'm getting a something here. But I'm not moving. Yes. If you come and find me, you find me in the same spot. Yes. And guess what? He is getting the same thing. Yep. Arms. Yes. So you're sitting here. You're not moving into the temple and you're not moving out. You're yes. not moving into the kingdom. You're not moving out. You're yes. not taking the proceeding word. Yes. Neither are you. You're here to, to, to receive it. Yep. So you can hear it because when he's sitting at the gate, if I'm singing, if I'm talking, if I'm, you can you hear, can hear. Me, but you're not entering. Yes, there are the many guy people could who are tell paralyzed. you which season it was because they came into the temple according to seasons. Yes, he can tell you it's feast of tabernacles. Mm -hmm. He can tell you it's Passover. Yes, he can tell you, but he never experiences them. Mm. Mm. That's what it does to he you. He can tell you what's happening exactly. there. Exactly. This actually season yes. is the season of the Absolutely. This uh, festival know. and that festival. I know. But I am not going in. Exactly. I am unable. And remember when you talk about a paralyzed person, mm. we always say that the paralyzed person is somebody who can see, yes. who can describe what yes. is happening around them, exactly. but they have no ability yes. to stand up and walk by themselves. Exactly. A paralyzed person will always need someone to support them. This is a picture. In the spirit, yeah. you need someone to come and say arise you are blessed pick the word you are not able to now, do it notice by yourself notice the funniest thing that you need to pay attention to in every miracle mm. in the bible mm. very important yeah when peter and john were coming to go to the temple they came to the guy they could have given him something they didn't mm -hmm. they realized what is your real problem yes you need to be able to the for the first time in 38 years experience a temple the bible says mm. he followed them into the temple yes but what did they say to him mm. rise up and, and walk. walk they didn't touch him mm. you rise up you walk. Guys, for me today, all I'm hearing is <laughs> prayer points, prayer points, prayer points. There's somebody today being told, get up, yeah. arise, I've met stop a sitting down and just watching. You cannot be listening to conversation yes. after conversation. You cannot have a pen and paper writing things that you're not moving into. You're, you're just the one hearing. At the gate. You're just saying, listen, all I want is a handout. Yes. All I want is pay my bill, pay my rent. Let me have food for today. That's all you're doing. You, you can't for. also be the man at the gate. You can describe everything. Mm. You are able to say, listen, we talked about this the is what is going on. This Melchizedek. Going on I now understand that. Mammon. My friend, <laughs> rise up. And walk. Yes. That's, That's a, a principle. For someone. Now he let takes. me tell you how deadly this spirit does. Mm -hmm. He starts in your mind, but he ends up in your body. Mm. Then he ends up in your world. Yeah. Okay? Scientists, doctors have discovered when you're in a state of stress, your body releases a chemical called cortisol. Mm. Now, too much cortisol, it's supposed to be there, but too much cortisol can cause you a number of problems. One, sleep disorder. Mm. Two, you have no focus. Mm. Imagine you have no focus because of a chemical. Mm. But the chemical was caught, caused by stress, which was caused by fear. By fear. It also causes weight gain, mm. and it can even affect your immune system. Mm. That's where the devil is going. Look at where we are going. We're talking about a giant yes. that we think is yes. just about a hittite. This causes fear. Yes. Fear causing stress. Yes. You can't sleep. Yeah. You can't focus. So it's, so it's started by paralyzing your mind. Mm. Now it's going for your body. Mm. The devil is here to kill you. He's not your friend. <laughs> so in the you end you say, physically times. now, some of us, we want to deal with this, mm. we start outside. We go and exercise. Why do you stop? Because you didn't deal with the mind and mm. brought your back down. I like what you've just said. 
if we can understand that the Hittite, when you talk about fear, yes. it first paralyzes your mind. Yes. But because I'm speaking, yes. I'm breathing and I can see, I think I'm alive. When it's you talk about when Jesus says, yeah. you cannot live yes. on anything else but there. What? what that comes from the mouth of God. It's yeah. not about eating and yes. just drinking water and having a place to sleep. No, it is about living on the word of God. Yes. So when I come to a place where I'm not living by the word of God, yes. I'm just surviving. And some people think that is life. Exactly. So now you are saying, yes. I should look at my life and say, wait a minute, is my mind paralyzed? Yes. And you know, hmm. let me show you the progression. Once that hmm. happens to you, the next thing that generally happens, these fears make us, we've said, act irrationally, but yep. they also make us act selfishly. Mm. Mm. Suddenly you become the central focus. Mm. It's all about me. Yes, and now it impacts you in a different way. You now begin to, to, to operate by the, 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 I call them the siblings, the twins <laughs> of fear. Yeah. Fear gives birth to a twins. Yeah. One twin is called manipulation and control. Mm -hmm. Those are the twins, manipulation <laughs> and, and control. control. Where now it is everybody's fault. It's not me. People don't understand you. This word is the people are. Yes. My parents did. By then my go. boss is like there this. There you go. Wow. It's all about Now it's come from your mind. Me. It's entered your body. It's now infecting and affecting others. others. Wow. That's what begins to happen. Suddenly, mm. Mm. you are in trouble. It's interesting. The Bible, over 300 times, actually some people say 366 times, the Bible uses the term fear not. Mm. And uh, I like the way some people look at it. They say, because there are 365 days in a year, mm. and in a leap year, 366. So we cover <laughs> even that one. So every single day God yes. is telling you fear not. Every fear time an angel not. came, yes. when they appeared to man, the first thing they said is fear not. Yes. Fear not. Exactly. Because with fear, yes. you cannot hear God. Exactly. With fear, you cannot trust God. With yes. fear, you cannot move to what God is telling you to yes. do. Fear paralyzes you. And don't forget what he just said. Yeah. Fear paralyzes your mind first. Yes. Then goes then for your it body. Goes to your body. Then it causes you to blame oh. everybody. Yeah. You begin to attack people. You're now infecting. passing it on. You're, You're infecting. infecting others. Fear will waste you, mm. drain you, and make you timid. Mm. Mm. That's a reality. Mm. That's how powerful this devil is. You notice when you hear about fear, it will make you timid. It yeah. will paralyze you. Yes. It will make you start blaming everybody else. Yes. Do you notice there's a way this thing causes you to have a holy anger? That yes. no way. I'm uh, not going not to allow Hittite to yeah. live around I, I, That's why God says destroy that. Destroy this completely. thing. Completely. There's no way I yes. would allow my life to be yes. controlled by Hittite. Now, we all know wow. that... The command was given by Moses, but it was time to take on mm -hmm. the actual act Joshua had to take charge. Yes. So we want to see Joshua's journey, and we're going to see if this order is correct. Who are, who are the first giants Joshua had to battle? So we'll look at Joshua chapter 1, verse 1 to 7. Today there's a bit of reading. Because where we're going next, please, the scriptures we're going to give you, go back and read them yes. and internalize them because mm -hmm. they are your keys. To the next level. Yes. The Hittite. Hitting the Hittite. Yes. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Mm -hmm. Now, therefore, arise. Go over this Jordan, you and all these people, mm -hmm. to the land which I am giving to them, mm -hmm. the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread, will tread upon, I have given you. As I said to Moses, from the wilderness to this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittite, and to the great sea towards the going down of the sun shall be your territory. Let's pause here for a moment. There Shall are some core territory. things I want to extract from this scripture. Yeah. The first thing I want to extract is the land of who? Hittites. <laughs> so th this is the first demand. Mm -hmm. You're about to enter. I've made a promise. You're going to conquer. I even tell you something. Yeah. The place you place the sole of your foot will mm. come back to that importance later. Mm. And it says clearly that no man will stand against you. Strange. Then he says, I'm giving you from the river Euphrates, the whole land of the Hittites, Hittites which means what Hittites. is the land that must first be taken? You don't take the Hittites, you can't take the rest of the land. Hmm. This is the reality. The first thing I want to mention is that. The second thing I want to mention is the river Euphrates. The river Euphrates is also the fourth river mentioned 
in Genesis. Yes. Because there is Pishon, Gihon, Hidekel, and Euphrates. I wish I had time to break down all of them. They all have meanings. But Euphrates is the important one to us here. The word Euphrates, actually, the, the, the Hebrew word for it is perath. It means fruitfulness. Mm. Mm. This land of fruitfulness. Yes. It also means to break forth into fruitfulness. So, breaking forth into fruitfulness is a result of overcoming your greatest fears. So you don't enter into fruitfulness without, overcoming without your greatest hitting fears. down or uh, destroying Hittites. Clear. Mm -hmm. You want to take this land of fruitfulness? Mm -hmm. The same land I gave Adam in Genesis. Yes. So this is the covenant promise. Yeah. But you want to enter fruitfulness. You want to break forth. You want to enter this new environment. When we declared the other day, God said we've broken forth, we've entered. Mm -hmm. God was mm -hmm. saying, destroy Hittites. Hittite. That's where we are. Destroy and Hittite. remember, God said something. I will give you the land a little at a time. Yes. So God is not telling you, take all the giants on Monday morning yes. and destroy them. Yes. No. Like yes. now you notice Joshua is being told, I'm giving you the land of the uh -huh. That one I've already given yes. you. you know? Then he uses a term. Every place that, every place that you set your, your, food. Foot, your foot, I will give to you. Mm. Okay. The scripture dealing with the word feet. Mm. Feet are a type of the mind. I wish I had time to go and teach the whole concept. I've taught it before. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Listen, your feet don't see. Mm. So you can quote that scripture all you want. Close your eyes and take a lamp and let's see if you'll walk straight. <laughs> you will stumble. So feet in the Bible always speaks of your mind, your mentality, the place you will go. Mm. So it says, listen, everywhere you place your, your foot. foot. When your mentality gets this right, mm. you will access it. Mm. That is the principle. Yeah. When you get it right. So when your mentality, you're saying, when your mentality comes and captures and says, wait yes. a minute, I'm supposed to have this. That's when what you, you talk about. The, the feet in the Bible, like he said, yes. is always a picture of the yes. feet. So of your when mind. of your sorry of your mind. Yes. So when you're being told, remove your shoes. That's Moses yes. was being told. Get off your sandals. Yes. You're on holy ground. Uh -huh. He was not being told. Yes, in the, in Moses' day, it was sandals that he was going yes. to remove. We'll see that again. In our day, we are yes. being told there's a mentality that you have. Remove it because you'll not be able to stand before this giant when you have the mentality. Exactly. You cannot destroy the giant with yes. that mentality. And yeah. God says to him, I will not leave you nor no, forsake. forsake you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Why does God repeat those two things? It sounds mm. like the same thing. It does. It isn't. Yeah. I will not leave you and not abandon you. I will not forsake you. You will never be on your own. Mm. That's my favorite scripture. Every time when you feel discouraged, sometimes yes. you see things happening. Yes. Don't be dismayed. Yes. Just say one thing. I know my God that I serve has promised one thing. I will never leave you. Guess what? You can leave him. You can try to leave him. Yes. But he tells you, me. The creator who created you, I will never leave you. Why does God I give, will never. Why does God give us that promise? Yeah. Because we will not see him while he has not forsaken us or left us. There are times you feel it like will look like he has left. But he's telling you, I haven't left. It is you who can't see me. Yeah. But I, I will never leave present. you. Yeah. So in verse 6, please read verse 6 again. Okay. Yes. Be strong uh -huh. and of good courage. Yes. For to these people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to, you, to their fathers to give them. That is so, verse 6. Be what? Strong and of good courage. Read verse 7 again. I mean verse 7. I want you to see a, a sequence. Only be strong and very courageous. God has repeated it. <laughs> that you may? That you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Mm -hmm. Do not turn to, from it to the right mm -hmm. hand or to the left, mm -hmm. that you may prosper wherever you go. Okay, I want you to notice something God is doing. Mm -hmm. God is promising to be with you. God is promising not to forsake you. Yes. God is promising you to possess the land. Yes. But the strange thing is that he is commanding you to be strong and courageous. Two times. What did we He's tell you? What did we tell you? It. To be strong is to have willpower. Mm -hmm. To be courageous. Yes. What is going on? Remember what the hitter goes after? What is God telling you to maintain? Courage. And then he says if you Courage. do that, you will prosper wherever you go. Wherever. That you may prosper mm -hmm. wherever you go. There you that go. That is God talking. Mm -hmm. If you can be strong 
and very courageous. But what does he tell you to do while he's saying that? Observe. Mm, everything that Moses has told you, my, the priest has spoken. He has downloaded a word from heaven. For you, you've had the instruction. When you have that, be strong and very courageous. When you hear be strong, God is not telling you to go to the gym. Mm -mm. God is telling you internally there's a strength you need. There's a strength you need to go through this. What did Moses say? Mm -hmm. I will give you the power to create wealth. Mm. Believe what Moses said. Yeah. Be strong. Be courageous. Yes. Right? So the, the Hittite hinders our breaking forth. Mm. But God is giving us a technology. And that technology is hidden in verse 5 to 7 as we have read. Where he says, listen, no man will withstand you. Yes. I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. Mm. He says that twice. Again, yes. And he says that's how you will divide an inheritance. Yes. In fact, he says be strong and very courageous. Just courageous. Yes. Very. Now, the question is, <laughs> what are the most important things that are going here? There are two words I want us to really, really deal with. Because we have been told, get to the Euphrates, fruitfulness. Mm -hmm. We've been told, this, take the land of the Hittite, yes. and destroy him. Yeah. Then we've been told, how? Mm. The how is very important. So if you've been told, you have entered the ranch. Uh, yeah, the ranch. You have entered the ranch. <laughs> That's good ranch right there. Yes, continue. <laughs> ah, it's my turn. Yes. Listen, yeah. you have entered the land, TCC. Yes. Yes. And in this place, you are supposed to be experiencing God's power to create wealth. What yes. is that? You frets. Yes. Fruitfulness. Yes. Being full of fruit. Yes. You can touch, you can see. Thank Fruitfulness you. is not a spiritual thing. No. Move. Listen, there is faithfulness. There is Fruitfulness. fruitfulness. The command in Genesis was be fruitful. Mm. I know, believers, we have been very faithful. faithful. It's time to be fruitful. fruitful. So if you've been told to be fruitful, now God is telling you, let me give you the key of how to stand in this place. How yes. to come to this place where you're saying, yes. without these two statements, uh, these two words, yes. you'll not be able to be fruitful. There you go. There, the, there the you two go. Words. So let's look at these two words. Mm -hmm. The first word that is given is be strong. The word is shazak in the Hebrew. Shazak means to be strengthened. It means to prevail. It means to be firm. Mm. Mm. Prevail. Go through with this. Mm. Be Don't firm. be intimidated. Mm. Don't be slowed down. Be resolute. Mm. And I love the word be, uh, prevail. You prevail. Be firm. Yes. That you're not swayed. Yes. Today you're not thinking of the prophetic word. Yes. It's like this. Then tomorrow you're discouraged and you're like, actually, what uh, this, this does not work. Yes. Okay, am I might be insensible. Oh, yes. no, 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 no. Let me trust God. Yes. You're not firm. Yes. Be strong. Be no. firm. Now let me say something on that because many of us, this is where the Hittite gets us. Mm. We think being strong and taking an action is a formula. So, We'll say, but I tried and tried and tried. No, he didn't tell you about the trying. He said about the being strong. Mm. Mm. So in the trying, what's supposed to be built? Strength. So when you've been strong, even if it seems nothing has happened, be strong. Prevail. Mm. Mm. It is you who is the issue. The problem is this. I've done one, two, three. I'm not seeing anything. Your strength has just gone. The things are fine, what mm. you've been doing, but you've yeah. just lost. Strength means... I will prevail. I have no other intent except to see this through. Yes. I have no other intent. Mm. So it's not about time. It's about seeing it through. So what is Joshua being told? Joshua, I'm taking you to this. You're taking these prevail. people in. Guys, be strong. Be strong. Prevail. The prevail. second word. Be courageous. courageous. Amats. Mm. Amats has a lot of meanings, but I'll take a few. One is to be alert. means be very discerning. Mm. Mm. That's powerful. Don't be misled. Don't be sidetracked. Mm. So wait, when you talk about being a, a lot in this place, yes. you're being told that things will happen, but you're a lot to see. Is I this the enemy? Is this God? Yes. Is this God directing me? Yes. Is the Holy Spirit telling I'm a lot in uh -huh. the spirit? Wow. It also means to be brave, be, mm -hmm. to be stout, to be bold, to be solid, to be secure. But it has another word I like, to be obstinate. Mm. Mm. Obstinate. Do you know the meaning of the word? Caleb, it means a bulldog with a bone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it will not let go. Mm -hmm. It has grabbed. You can beat it. Yes. You can do what you want. 
it will keep its bond. Powerful picture. When I'm courageous, yes. I say, listen, devil, you can throw whatever. Yeah. I'm not letting go. Yes. Why? Because I know I'm holding on to the word yes. of a God who said something. Yes. I have given you the land. Simple. I have already given you to possess. Yes. I am trusting in him. Yes. And that is why I'm holding on to the yes. prophetic word that this is my season. So yes. when I hear something and I see something, yes. my, my, my heart tells me, mm. Be courageous. Yes. Hold on to that. And, and be that obstinate. The power of this word. It also means to be assured. Mm. It means to be determined. Mm. It means to persist. So look at these two combinations. Persist and prevail. Mm. I call them the glory <laughs> twins. The oh, power yes. twins. The yes. possessing twins. Mm. Mm. What does that mean? It means this. People ask the question. How do I know when I'm just walking in my own strength and pushing things? And how do I know when it is God? When it is a word. You have every right to be as obstinate. Oh yes to be as prevailing, <laughs> as persistent. But it is your own word that is foolishness. Mm. But when you are clear, it is the word, and God is the one who has spoken, mm. then you have every right to push the agenda to the end. So in this season, God has already spoken to us. Yeah. He's telling us, TCC, yes. be strong yes. and courageous. Yes. Be strong and courageous. Yes. Be firm yeah. and be obstinate. Yes. Hold on, prevail and yeah. persist. Yes. That's and, what and that word amounts courage. To be, to be very courageous, it also means to prove to be superior to. Mm. For me to prove, I have prove to Prove you're through. superior to this situation. Mm. I have to go through. Prove you're superior to anything trying to stop you. Mm. That's what it means. Yeah. To have courage. It says wow. that you may prosper Where? wherever. So God is not putting a <laughs> limit on in what. We no longer ask the questions, is it a good business, is it a bad business? Mm. Is it a good place, is it a bad place? You will prosper wherever you Wherever, go. when as you choose. As, as long as you function like this, oh. wherever. Mm. That's a real blank check. Yeah. So, what is the basis of this strength and courage? Where does it come from? Where do you get the courage and the strength to do this? Mm. It is hidden in one of our favorite scriptures, Joshua 1.8. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, mm -hmm. and you shall meditate in it day and night, mm -hmm. that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. Mm -hmm. For then you will make your way prosperous, mm -hmm. and then you will have good success. This is interesting. This is actually Joshua 1, 8 and 9. Now the funny thing is, we are right back at the proceeding word. That's where the courage comes from. Yes. That's where the strength comes from. Now listen to the breakdown carefully. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. It's interesting. What is the book here? Mm. It's not a written book. Yeah. What is the law here? It is not a legal law. It's a principle of heaven. Mm -hmm. This principle of heaven shall not depart from your mouth. Do you know why we have kingdom conversations? <laughs> so that we can keep the word going. We can tell ourselves, I'm it keeping it It cannot depart from your mouth. Don't yeah? let it go till you see it. Mm. But you shall meditate on it day and night. Remember the right brain? Meditate means to muse, to think, to perceive, to see yourself, to accept. So you're saying that when the word is given, yes. when I get my proceeding word, yes. that word I muse on it, I yes. meditate on it, yes. this becomes my... Um, Thinking pattern, exactly. it actually replaces my thoughts. Remember we talked about having a lot of junk? Yes. This is how to... This is how you displace. Displace. This is how you do it. There's nothing like removing a piece and yeah. leaving the place nope. empty. You displace. Yes. This is the displacement yeah. theory. Now when you talk about activity here of meditating day and night, you're saying that in the day when everything is bright and you can see loud yes. and clear, and in the night when you're not sure what is happening, yes. when you cannot say, I am, you know when you say, I can't feel God, yes. sometimes you say, I can't see God, I Thank cannot you. see like heaven is backing yes. me in this, when it is day, when it is night, Absolutely. meditate on the word, no, let the, the word right. become your, occupying, that's, that's what truth. occupies that's your what mind. It is. And yeah. Let me tell you, this is one of the most powerfully stolen tools of the kingdom that mm. the world has taken. Mm, meditation. Meditation. Yeah. And when some of us hear meditation, we think of all sorts of weird things. Cool. <laughs> there you go. What is the principle of meditation? It means to muse, mm. to mutter. Mm. Okay, let me explain what that means. It means talking to yourself. Mm. I'm telling myself, what do you say day. to yourself? It's my what season. does it mean? What mm. does this thing mean? And Mary kept these things in her heart. It's called meditation. Meditation. 
That's the principle. Mm. Think through it. What does it actually mean? What is the outcome? How does it change me? Yes. If God spoke it, is this a reality? Mm. And then it says, day and night. What does that mean? Yeah. Scripture has metaphors. Mm. Day always means when things are fine. Yes. Stay on the word. Yeah. And when things are not making sense mm. in the night, mm. when nothing seems to be moving, yeah. when there seems to be no answer, mm. meditate. Yes. If you do that, then it says, then you that you may. See where it comes from? Action. Remember we said fear paralyzes action. Mm -hmm. Meditation activates action. Mm. So when I meditate day and night, then I observe to do. Exactly. Notice we are back to doing. God yeah. will never leave you in that place where yes. you are like just meditating only. Yes. Go and do something. Do what? Do what is written. Mm. Do what the, pro the, the preceding word, word says. Yes. Act on it. Mm. If you do that, then, and I like this part, you will make your way prosperous you. and you will have good success mm -hmm. god won't do it you're holding it like this with your when you're being told meditate yes. you're being told that meditation yes. is not for somebody else it's for exactly. you exactly you will make your ways prosperous yes. yes and you will have good success you will have good there's something called success yes. and there's something called good exactly. success exactly in this one we have been told good good success, success. god then re-emphasizes have i not commanded you be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. What we're basically saying is this. God is focusing on two issues again. He goes back and talks about being afraid, being dismayed. Yes. Why is he bringing this out again after giving them that entire information on how to deal with this? Mm. Because he is now telling you again, do not be afraid or, or dismayed. dismayed. Yep. This is a core issue. Afraid or dismayed? To be afraid, we now know. To be dismayed is to be, like we said, to be disempowered. Mm. To be unable to move. move. Yeah. Yes. So it's almost like he's now saying it again a third time. How serious is it? Be strong. It is the core <laughs> to everything. I think our message today is yes. be strong, be yes. courageous, be yes. of good courage. Yes. Yeah. He's with you wherever you go. Why would God keep telling us that? Mm. Because many times... We don't feel like he's with us. Yes. He's basically saying he will be with you, irrelevant of whether you feel it. And he says, yeah. when you're walking like this, remember you're walking in the proceeding world. Yes. Then he tells you, he will be with you wherever you go. go. Now that answers our last <laughs> week's question when yes. people would ask, how do I know if I'm walking my own thing uh -huh. or it is God sending me? Exactly. How do I know what I'm doing is my own thing or God is telling me? Okay. Wherever you yes. go. But why are you going? Because yes. your going is his going. Exactly. If you are aligned. Yes. So you reach a place where you say, I'm starting a business. Your business is God's business. In yes. the sense of now your desire has become his desire. Exactly. We have to all understand yep. the ultimate plan. Mm -hmm. why, why is it attacking your ability to meditate on the word? Yep. The ultimate outcome that the Hittite spirit looks for is to immobilize you into inaction In action. so that you do not act hmm. on the word that helps you enter the promised land. Mm -hmm. I will repeat myself. Yes. To immobilize you mm -hmm. into inaction action. so that you do not act on the word and enter your promises. Back to doing. Yes. All the enemy is looking for. And you talk about the Hittite. No. All the enemy is looking for is to keep you in this place. That's it. Where you're not doing immobilization. What you to immobilization. Do. You know how many world times we've dealt with that? Yeah. So what is the utmost plan of fear? Mm -hmm. Paralysis. Yes. Inaction. Mm -hmm. Immobilization. You do not act out. You do not get to where God is taking you. I think today's message has come <laughs> through. That when we talk about fear, this is where fear is taking you. Now, remember, we've described fear. We've yes. said how fear brings you to this place of paralysis. Yes. The question is, how do I stand up? Yeah. How do I wake up and move to the next level? Joshua yes. has to be our pattern yeah. because this is his one. He's the key. Eh? And this, this is now, listen, we're not done with Joshua. No. We will now look at how Joshua and the Israelites in our next edition actually actualized this reality step by step mm. until they were able to fully bring this to pass yes so it, the, the, the bible doesn't leave us hanging on this story yeah we see the action part of it so more is coming yeah but as of now what i want to do is actually i just want to pray with the people okay one remember what i said we can pray to break the power of the heated spirit over your life all right but you will have to step up mm. you will have to have courage you will have to be strong. So strong is internal, 
Courage comes out of boldness and action. Mm. So strong is what you become. Yes. Courageous is what you How you do. act. So you yes. have to go out and do something. Exactly. So we are praying for that. Now that you know, yes. I'm supposed to be internally like this. Exactly. Even though this prayer is for you, you still have to go back. Yeah, yeah. Prayer, prayer, prayer. Yes. This is where we'll be. Yes, and remember, the key to praying is to deal with the external, the attack system, mm -hmm. how the enemy comes at you, the power behind it. But, like we said before, if you don't encourage yourself, if you don't mm -hmm. rise up, yeah. if you don't step out and take an action, mm -hmm. we will not have known if that prayer was in effect yes. at all. So, yes, Father, we just want to thank you because... You said you've given us the land. You've told us to see that we are able to take the mm. land. You've spoken to us powerfully in what we need to do. And so at this time, Father, I just want to pray for everybody listening and those who will listen, that the power of this spirit is broken over their lives. Yes. Its intent, its motive is revealed and exposed. Mm. But more so, I pray that the power being broken, that there'll be an activation from within us. Mm to act on the word you've given us yes. and to walk in that process, a commitment to take up that capacity and to actually act in boldness and in strength. Let the Holy Spirit bring to remembrance the word. Mm. Let us be able to meditate on it as the word says, yes. day and night. Let us be alert and in no way distracted by that which the enemy brings yes. and lead us to others who have the same conversation mm. as we do, that we may walk in the fullness. Yes. We pray this in Jesus' name. We say yes, yes, yes to the word, and yes. we are saying yes, that yeah. we are stepping out, destroying the heat yes. and getting into action mm. of that which the word is commanding us. Yes. All right? We had mentioned earlier the thinking unusual, and I'll let you maybe yes. announce what that is. Yes. So this coming Friday, we begin the thinking unusual. Thinking unusual will be a short interaction, not more than 15 minutes. What, why do we need thinking unusual? The Bible is very clear. It says your life cannot change unless your thinking changes. Be transformed by the renewal of the world. But it starts by saying do not be conformed to this world. So we'll be dealing with how are you conformed? How do you be transformed? It says you be transformed. Mm, mm. God didn't say I'll transform you. He said be. You do it. Yes. And then how do you then do that and then your life will change? So thinking is a crucial part of our life. Many of us were never taught how to think. Mm. We were never taught how to reason and to think. And remember, thinking here is left right, left brain, right brain. Thinking here is not one track. Yes. Like the world, it is the kingdom mind. That is the key. So please, please, share the link. When you get it, it will be live streamed in on the very same channel you're watching. And we are dealing with more, more like a mental workshop. Yes. And our theme is transforming lives one paradigm at a time. Business Unusual on the 16th of October. For those in Nairobi, Golden Tulip Hotel Westlands. Now, this is a meeting where we'll be charging 1,500 Kenya shillings, $15 for our international community. We have the link for your payment. And of course, for those who are joining us for the very first time, look at our West, uh, Facebook page, the Cyrus Community, the details are there. Or send us an email if you'd like to join us on this day. Business Unusual on 16th of October. That is an in-person meeting. Now, Thinking Unusual is a live streaming yes. on Friday, like you're saying, 15 minutes of your time. But this will change how you think and how you perceive life according to the principles of the kingdom of God. Absolutely. And this is where we say keep it kingdom, keep, keep it, it pure. pure. God bless you. God bless you.